This is the day. Mark down this day, September 12th, 2016. This is the most important day so far in this presidential campaign. There are 56 days left in the campaign, which means this day might be outdone. But as of now, as of tonight, as of 10 p.m., this is the day that historians will see as the most important day in the campaign because it is the day that the political news media lost its mind. On Friday night, the Republican nominee for president told the world he was willing to start World War III over a gesture. By the way, with Iran, when they circle our beautiful destroyers with their little boats, and they make gestures at our people that they shouldn't be allowed to make, they will be shot out of the water. The next day, the headlines were not unhinged candidate vows war over gestures with a subhead of candidates' mental health question. He deserved a word-for-word -word comparison to the sayings of North Korea's dictator Kim Jong-un because there are only two people in the world who believe that a country's dignity can only be maintained with weapons. North Korea said its nuclear test last week was necessary, quote, to protect our dignity, end quote. That is a pure Trumpian definition of dignity. Donald Trump's candidacy long before Friday night had become a deplorable insult to the intelligence of the American voter. Yes, deplorable. But on Friday night, when he proudly announced that he was willing to start World War III over an issue of his perceived dignity, when he proudly took his place beside Kim Jong-un as one of the two most dangerous and dysfunctional minds in the world, he reached a new level of deplorable, and it was over the single most important decision a president can make when and where and how and why to use the weapons of war of the mightiest army in the world. The political media had the biggest policy story that has ever been handed to them by a presidential candidate, the policy of going to war over a gesture. And the news media quickly ignored it because the other candidate for president said something that the political media decided was much, much more important. It wasn't a policy announcement. It was a description of Donald Trump's supporters in which she used the word deplorable to describe many of their hateful ideas. She was careful enough to limit it to half of Trump supporters. But that wasn't careful enough for the news media because the media was clearly in the middle of a nervous breakdown on its way to a complete collapse, which happened the very next day when Hillary Clinton felt a little sick and decided to go home. The news media lost its mind lost all perspective on what matters in this presidential campaign, lost all perspective on how voters should make their choice. And Hillary Clinton's health became the most important thing in the world. And the older, not so healthy looking candidate in the race, Donald Trump, who has released only a doctor's letter with the lie that Donald Trump would be the healthiest person ever elected to the presidency, was allowed to use Hillary Clinton's more openness about her health against her. The separation between nonfiction and fiction is thin. It's very thin. It's a semi-permeable membrane through which each influences the other. And when I was a writer for the fictional White House on NBC's The West Wing, I always used nonfiction for story ideas, real conditions that existed in the world. The president would only do things that a real president could do. And so our president wouldn't, for example, have his political enemies killed because that's just not real, not in the United States anyway, not yet. And before long, I found that the fiction was teaching me how to think about nonfiction, how to think about the real world. Good fiction can do that. And that happened when the brilliant creator of the series, Aaron Sorkin, came up with the idea that the president should have an illness that no one knows about, a very serious illness that at some point down the road could become a problem, a big problem. And so the president secretly had MS. Aaron planted that idea in season one. 
And, I'll f and I found myself going back to it a couple of times in season six. And that's when I realized just how recent our obsession with the president's health is and just how misplaced it can be.